Good morning. This is Faith in Our Hometown, brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin. And now, here's your host, Father Jay Friedel. Well, good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us for another Sunday morning of Faith in Our Hometown, our weekly conversation uh, among people of faith here in the Joplin area. And it's so good to be with you again this morning. Um, you know, Missouri and Joplin are celebrating all kinds of anniversaries this year. And we kind of talked about that, uh, you know, a couple of months ago. But uh, we've got a very special guest with us today, the Iris Lady, um, who has come to talk a little bit about our Iris Festival, uh, has come to talk a little bit about our... Um, our sesquicentennial, and talk about all those different things that are gonna be happening to us uh, and all the different things that we got still awaiting us here in the next few months. Uh, that guest, our Iris lady, is none other than Diane Reed Adams, one of our uh, city councilwomen. Uh, and so uh, we're gonna be right back uh, to talk about all that uh, after this Mercy Minute. So grab that cup of coffee, settle in, and we'll be right back uh, to talk about our Iris Festival and so many other things that are awaiting us in this year. I have arthritis in my knees and it was just excruciating. I wish I would have done something sooner. I found myself not able to go up and down stairs, which is bad because we realized we were going to have to sell our house. We decided just to take the, the, first, the worst one first and uh, we did. I was back to work in six weeks. Uh, six months later, I had surgery on the second one, and, uh, and I'm back to work in five weeks. And I was a little scared, a little apprehensive, even though I knew everything that was going to happen. Um, but it just, I was just impressed. Life is short, and, and I waited, I, I think I waited too long. Well, again, thanks for joining us for another Sunday morning here at Faith in Our Hometown. My guest this morning, Diane Reed Adams. Diane, if I were going to give out a, uh, an award for the best costume ever for Faith in Our Hometown, you would win it now, hands down. <laughs> so, um, so tell us a little bit about your costume. Tell us a little bit about uh, what we're celebrating and what we're getting wound up for. And because uh, we got lots of different things to talk about this morning. All right, I am the City Council Liaison to the Joplin Celebrations Commission. So it's not just Joplin Sesquicentennial, which is in March of 2023, but includes the Missouri Bicentennial, which is coming up this August, and all kinds of events in between. And then in 26, we've got the Route 66 Centennial. So great things. Well, the iris is the city flower, the official city flower, and has been since 1938. At that time, the Garden Club members planted 30,000 iris rhizomes, which is what you call the bulbs, around town at the entrance to the city, and it was adopted by the city council in 1938, so it's our, our official flower. And over the years, it's kind of um, gone out of popularity, I guess you'd say. People don't know that it's our city flower. So I've been on a crusade to bring that back. Well, let, let's get a little shot of that flower here. I know you're, uh, yes, you know, they're there to your right. So I'm gonna get our cameraman to get a little nice shot of those flowers. Uh, these are from my are, garden. You know, those are from your garden. Yes, and these have been prize winners, not these particular ones, but these varieties. And they all have names like Keeping Up Appearances, Mexican Holiday, Stairway to Heaven, and Putting on the Ritz putting on the Ritz. There yeah. you go. Well, you've certainly done it for us today. Um, so those are just out of your garden. Yes. Um, you know, uh, now did you plant those or are those yes. some of the originals? No, I planted those you last year. You planted these last year. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So why are we, why are we doing this whole thing with the, with the irises? Just for the fun of remembering that it's our flower? Well, one of the things that the city manager came up with on his tour, his listening tour of Joplin, what the citizens want. One of them was to beautify our city. And what better way than to have our city flower blooming mm -hmm. in the spring. And so I've been on a crusade to get these planted. I've distributed over 600 rhizomes to schools, uh, both hospitals, um, a library, and um, the uh, 
Alumni Center at Missouri Southern. And then the Parks Department has probably planted about 400 at the various city parks. So we hope that by March of 2023, when this thing really kicks into gear, that we'll have a lot of iris planted. Sometimes it takes two years for them to bloom after they're planted, so we're starting now. And um, then we'll have iris tours in the first week of May of 2023. People will come to the museum, have some punch and cookies and pick up a map and go driving around town to see all of the iris gardens. So when they have a cookie, it's going to be an iris cookie. And uh, our former city clerk, Barbara Hoagland, had these cookie cutters made specially for us because the National Cookie, Cl cookie Cutters Club, that's hard to say, is housed at the Joplin Museum, the National Club. And she's a member of that. So she got this made up and we are selling these at the Empire Market, the museum, and at the CVB for $10. And on the back, you have the history of the city flower of Joplin. There you go. Well, I've always had a little bit of a fondness for the iris, and I also love, these are pretty irises, and I also love Japanese irises. Mm -hmm. They're just, I just, they're a little smaller, a little more yes. delicate, but the, but the whole idea, so since I'm from the St. Louis area, and uh, you know, that, that Florida Lee uh, has always been kind of a symbol mm -hmm. of, you know, our French history yes. way back when, when, the, uh, you know, when the, when, the, when the Mississippi Valley was, you know, kind right. of being, uh, you know, settled by French uh, mm -hmm. settlers, uh, you know, when they were coming uh, to the U.S. Uh, and so I've always just had that, you know, and of course, St. Louis, King of France, that was also the, you know, the, the symbol for mm -hmm. uh, their royal house. And so, I, you know, I grew up with Florida Lee all over mm -hmm. everything. And so uh, I've always had just a fondness for the iris as well. It's been pretty. It's also so. been called the orchid of the Ozarks. There you go. Yep. And in some ways, it's just about as pretty as a, a big orchid. Oh yeah. Well, prettier in some ways, and but but very different in its mm -hmm. own way. So they are indeed beautiful. They don't last very long. The blooms last a couple of days, and then they're gone. But you know, that's sort of the anticipation when you see the buds first come on, and oh, what's this going to be? And and I, yeah. I can hardly wait for the green Well, it's always fun, because I mean, even when I walk the trail, a lot of many times out at the Frisco Trail, um, it is, uh, you know, that you'll see a different, you know, because they, sometimes they just come on in little bursts. Uh -huh. You know, that first one color is gonna open up, and then, you know, you're there two days later, and uh, those are all faded, but there's another color that's yes. suddenly taken uh, front and center stage, and it's just beautiful watching the way they do this. And the fun thing about the rhizomes, um, I found this out when I was in Cape Girardeau, uh, what is that, you know, they kind of like grow and that's how they spread is they just kind of keep growing from, you know, all both ends mm -hmm. and pretty soon you plant in a couple spots and before long you get a whole bed full right. uh, and then you start having to split them up to right. spread them out, which is kind of fun. About every four or five years, yeah. to divide them and then you can share with your neighbors and your friends. Mercy Park is going to be kind of our centerpiece for our iris tours and things. Our uh, Parks Department has located some beds there, and we're going to try to maybe arrange them around the sculptures. Nice. Along the trails, and have some events there in 2023. Another fun place to walk, I might add, mm -hmm. you know, Mercy Park, so yeah. But it's just kind of fun seeing, you know, the, the efforts of some of our horticulturists in the area, you know, our garden people, which is kind of fun. And I had no idea until you told me earlier uh, that we were the home to the National Cookie Cutter uh, Club. Yes. Uh, but I love the fact that we got our own cookie cutters uh, to right. kind of, uh, uh, you know, highlight one of these little aspects of Joplin. So, I mean, it gives everybody an excuse to go out and bake cookies, I think. It's a good deal. Well, every child who visits the cookie cutter display at the museum gets to take home a cookie cutter. Not one of these, but they have some little plastic little ones that yeah. children like. Yeah, nice, yeah. fun. So, uh, so we got the we got the Iris uh, Festival coming up. We're just kind of getting it rolling, which I think mm -hmm. is you know, again, good planning because if it, you know you can't just plan them and then think that they're going to no. be ready, you know, right, you know, tomorrow. Uh, but some of those things, like a lot of things that you have to wait for, are good to just watch them spread and grow and to do those things, which is fun. So, what else do we have coming up? You mentioned some of those other things at the beginning of the show. Uh, you know, some of the other events that are, that are taking right. place. Some of them are uh, in conjunction with the Missouri Bicentennial. There's a Bicentennial quilt that's traveling around. There's an art show. Um, we're going to be making storyboards to put along the trails, primarily in Landreth Park, because that's where the first lead strike was, near the, the overpass. 
Okay. And so there'll be storyboards and people can read about the history of Joplin as they walk the trails. And I think there'll be some events going on in Landreth Park. So we'll, we're in the planning stages of that, some concerts maybe, and I hope maybe an historic costume contest. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. So yes, I was, I, you know, like I say, um, you know, that is so. So you were mentioning earlier that this particular costume that you're wearing um, is is a Chirka, um 1870s. 73, uh huh. Yeah. So St. Peter's, you know, 1877, we know, was the first mass that kind of got held here, uh, you know, in the Joplin area. Uh, one of the fam yes. families, uh, you know, invited a priest in and uh, they had a mass for the first time in 1877. So that's what we see as the beginning. So that would have been high dress for people of that era. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. So now, did we, did do you, do we think we got much of this in the in the hard uh, the mining areas themselves, or this was just high class society? This would have been the mine owners' wives. Okay. Yeah. So they were a little bit more highfalutin than the miners' wives. Yes. Okay. For parties and things, and and then of course we had uh, the Schifferdeckers come along, and the Zelikans, and of course their homes are being restored right now, and. St. Peter's was very helpful in donating some <laughs> limestone to the Schifferdecker right. house to, to kind of shore up the foundation. It, that house was rocky yeah. on the foundation, and that sturdy limestone from the old Knights of Columbus Hall has helped to stabilize that. When the, before it was the Knights of Columbus <laughs> Hall, in all fairness, it was the Christian church, and before that, it was the Mormon uh, church. So, I mean, it, it had a history, too. Uh -huh. But, you know, part of the deal was is that uh, Mr. Schifferdecker made a big donation uh, when we were building St. Peter's. And so um, the rose window actually is in memory mm -hmm. of his family, and he he wanted that. Uh, originally, he and some of the business owners wanted to pay for the whole thing, but the pastor at that time said, I don't think that's healthy for somebody else to just pay for our whole church. He said, we, we'll let you make a good donation and we'll take your money, but we want to raise some of it ourselves to make sure. And so that was what we did. So that was our thinking. You know, I, I had the idea and the parish council and the finance committee just kind of said, okay, you know, uh, well, all right, we can go with that. But it was like, it was kind of like, paying it back in reverse yes you know so since the shiver deckers were so kind to us during that era we thought well why not now we've got this limestone that we really don't have a a, a specific use for at this point in time why not give some of that back mm -hmm. uh as they're trying to restore that home if there's enough left over we may actually use some of it too um and we haven't talked about with them about this yet but uh I think Father Joe is going to do that, but if there's if there's some left over after they finish what mm -hmm. they're doing and their needs for it there, we'd like to use some of it too for the cross, uh, the new mo monument that's going around the cross oh. uh, at the uh, where the old St. Mary's yes. sat, um, you know, and to use some of that there again, kind of tying in our history and some of those other things. But obviously, lots of things going on, and we're going to talk mm -hmm. come back, uh, you know, to talk, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit more about uh, some of those other things in a minute. What we're talking this morning about the history of our beautiful city and where that sits in uh, the history of our state and all those other things. So my guest this morning, Diane Reed Adams, uh, who's here with us in full period costume uh, back from our city's founding days. And we're gonna be right back uh, after this quick break, so don't go away. Uh, and we're gonna be right back to continue those conversations in just a second, okay? <laughs> You're watching Faith in Our Hometown on KSN-TV, brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin. Well, again, thanks for sticking with us for this, uh, this episode of Faith in Our Hometown where we're talking a little bit about Joplin history. Right before the break, we were talking about the Shiverdecker House yes. and you know, some of those connections with St. Peter's and what the Shiverdeckers did. You know, a few weeks ago, we had um, you know, the, uh, the, the, uh, the Connor Hotel, and we were talking mm -hmm. about that book and those kinds of things. So <coughs> it's always fun if you ask me to talk about our history in that way. So uh, how soon do we think that the Schifferdecker and the Zelikan houses and those kinds of things will be ready for folks to, to be touring? Because I know that okay. once they got into it, I know it was a lot bigger project than they originally had right. guessed. And the third house is the A.H. Rogers house, which is cat-cornered across from Zelikan. Well, you know, the Schifferdecker house suffered 
a major fire in 91. So as they got into it, they found that the walls had bowed out because you have the heat and then you have the water coming in, just like we have at the Olivia now. So it t has turned into a much larger project than they thought. <coughs> I was in there yesterday crawling around in the dirt and the dust and the stepping on beams to get across from here to there. And it's just amazing that there are a few walls standing <laughs> and some studs and some floors and that's it. You know, they're going to have to put all this back, but it's going to be done exquisitely. Yeah. And then the Zelikan home is a different story because it had not suffered damage. So it's more intact. It's still kind of bare bones right now. It's more intact. So well, I would be guessing maybe a couple of years and I'm hoping to be able to secure my spot as a docent in one of those when they open up. Well, and again, here's a little another tie-in with the Zelikans and St. Peter's uh, because the Zelikans were Catholic family. The Shiver Deckers were not, mm -hmm. but the Zelikans were. And the Zelikans, um, when they moved to that new house, it's not going to be the museum, the house that they moved out of uh, became the first convent for the Mercy Sisters. And I have been in that one yeah. many years went, ago. Yeah, many years ago. Um, and of course, that's not standing now. Yeah. Uh, we took that one down. It was in, it was in bad need of, yes. uh, of you know, going away. But I'm, I'm glad that, this, that, that, that the newer Zelikan house is still going to be uh, you know, standing and to do this kinds of things. And we still have, again, uh, descendants of the Zelikans still in the parish um, and it's just kind of fun just seeing the way that some of that you know passes its way down for history uh, you know we've still got descendants of the first people who hosted the first mass we've got one of those descendants living you know uh, still in our parish and so it's just kind of fun knowing that some of that those Joplin roots are still here yes um you know at least uh, at least from that you know the, the founding of our city i mean you know we obviously we know there was plenty of history before that uh but um but it you know at least we've got some of those things of those eras that are there so yeah uh kind of fun i really don't know uh, i don't know that we have a time with the rogers at all uh for the third a third of those houses that's right. being redone. And i don't think it is going to be open to tours it's going to be more offices and and a place maybe to get maps because they are in historic Murfreesburg. Right. And so we're trying to come up with signage and maps for walking tours of Mercy, Murfreesburg because there's some beautiful older homes there. Right. And the historic Murfreesburg group has done a lot toward preserving that neighborhood. Yeah. So that's what's going on in, in Murfreesburg. That's what's going on with the museums there. Um, we talked a little bit about the bicentennial celebration for the state of Missouri. Okay, so we yeah. got a few things going on with that. Anything, you got any more little tidbits of knowledge about that one? Yes. Um, everybody's going to eat ice cream on August 10th in the state of Missouri. Okay, there you go. Get your ice, Get your cream, ice cream bowls ready. ready. You got, you got a month. Because that's just something that the state commission has decided that would be fun to commemorate. I am always in favor of eating ice cream <laughs> myself. And we thought, what if we got a lot of people to make homemade ice cream? Oh, no, I can't do that. But because of COVID, it's probably going to be the little individual cartons handed out. But at this point, I think we have four neighborhoods in Joplin that have uh, committed to hosting a neighborhood ice cream social. So I think that would be a great way for neighbors to get together and maybe talk about what their neighborhood could do for the sesquicentennial. Yeah, so that's good. Ice cream on August the 10th yes. as part of the, as part of the the bicentennial for the state? Bicentennial, okay. yes. Okay, so the sesquicentennial, so that bicentennial is 200 years. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're coming up 200 years as a state. Yes. Okay, but the sesquicentennial which would be 150, yes. is our city, city. Mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so uh, in terms of that, uh, what, what little tidbits of knowledge do you have about that going on now? Because that, that's going to be a little bit later, but I mean, we're, right. we're, getting, we're, we're trying to do all this looking at all this history and this planning now. Right, and uh, you know, Joplin was actually two towns. The lead strike was in what is now Landreth Park, and the west side of that was called Murfreesburg after Patrick Murphy and the east side was Joplin City. So in 1873 they incorporated into the city of Joplin and that's what we're celebrating. So a lot of the activities will take place in Landreth Park. 
I'm hoping that we can have some activities for children, maybe go pan the creek for some <laughs> lead or whatever. And I'm going to have to think on that one. But maybe, yeah, yeah uh, we don't want any kids <laughs> to drown in the creek. <laughs> or, yeah, okay. <laughs> but maybe some informational booths, some games, some food uh, that would just be fun. Yeah. Well, I just think that it's, I, you know, I've really enjoyed my 15 years here in Joplin um, because, I mean, the city is packed with all kinds of history. Mm -hmm. uh, some of it rough and tumble. I love the way that our Catholic, you know, history and, and mercy and all those things are tied in with that Catholic history. I love the way that it kind of is nestled right there in the history of Joplin and in the history of the state. Mm -hmm. um, I came from, you know, cities that were, you know, that my, my you know, uh, my I came from Florissant. My, my relatives are across the river in Illinois, but I came from Florissant. And again, that's just a, you know, it's got such a history, you know, that I, that I grew up experiencing that, knowing that, and knowing where we sat in that history. And, and I, I just love the fact, and I've appreciated that about Joplin since ever moving here 15 years ago, that that was part of the whole thing there. Uh, and we really do have a, uh, just a lot, of, uh, a lot of richness to our past. And we have a very effective historic preservation commission that uh, works with property owners to try to, to give us that authentic feel, downtown especially. Mm -hmm. And I think we're seeing a rejuvenation, revitalization of our downtown through those efforts. Oh, Lord, I am surrounded by construction. You know, everybody was just, everybody kept saying, oh my God, that downtown area is just, it's falling apart and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Okay, well, they're building a new courthouse yes. and they're building a new performing arts center. And now I'm hearing rumblings about, you know, stuff for the old library. Yes. And, you know, so, you know, Memorial Hall, I, Memorial and, Hall <laughs> and doing all that stuff. And I'm just like, okay, uh, I, you know, we're not falling apart. We're not going away. We're actually getting very much rejuvenated. Right. Uh, and to me, that's exciting. It is. You know, yeah, very exciting. Uh, you know, I know some people just say, well, maybe we should just move. Maybe we should move our school out to the, you know, all of it out to the, you know, to the, you know, to the new property of the new St. Mary's. And I'm just like, well, why? I mean, you know, there's just so many things happening down here as well. So, I mean, we don't want to miss out on any of the fun, either the new construction and the new areas that are now coming into existence on the edges. Uh, that's all great. Uh, it's good for the city. And I also want to just say, but uh, we are also, you know, really, really entrenched downtown. And mm -hmm. I mean, you know, they're not taking our St. Peter's building and taking it anywhere. Oh, no. I mean, it's been there forever, uh, you know, since 1905, which is forever from my estimation. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but it's just, uh, it's just beautiful just uh, being down there with all that excitement and that growth. It is. And, you know, we've recovered from the tornado pretty much, you know, in terms of our, our the city. And now we're going beyond. Well, and I, and I, I that you know, I, I, I loved some of the articles recently in the paper the last few days about uh, that we didn't curl up and go away mm -hmm. after the tornado. We, we, we all stuck together and we figured out how to make it work. And so the city has come back stronger, you know, rather than, uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll never forget. I mean, you know, all those stories of doom and gloom that I, heard, I read in the article. And I remember the, that you know, one of the religious experts from elsewhere, you know, said, you know, came in and said, oh, you know, here's what's going to happen. All you ministers are sitting in this room today. Eighty-five percent of you are going to be gone in the next five years. And we just kind of looked around and went, looked at each other and went, no, I, I don't think so. But they just said, oh, we've just seen it happen after a disaster. This is what happens to the fabric of a community. And I, I, uh, I just am so grateful that we didn't, that we weren't typical, that we were atypical, that we, that we didn't fall apart the way so many places do. Maybe that we still, still have here. some of that old hard rock minor spirit to uh, us. To hard scrapple, I'm telling it. you. Yeah, <laughs> and, and we do, I think. Uh, it's one of the things I, I like about Joplin. I, sometimes it irritates me about Joplin, but I really like it about Joplin more than it irritates me. <laughs> and that is that we're just kind of like a little bullheaded and you know got a mind of our own. And we just said, oh, I've had worse than that in my eye, and we're just gonna keep going on with it. That's right. And that's certainly not to make light of the pain of all the people who suffered through the things that they suffered through. Well, I lost a uh, family member in the tornado. Yeah. I'll never forget that, but there are ways to honor those memories and then move forward. Yeah, and it, it, again, it's just, uh, and I think that what all those folks would say, since we're in the, so close to the anniversary, I think that all those folks would say to us, just like, well, okay, we're, we're gone, but, but, but you're still there. And we're with you. Mm -hmm. We're just with you in a different way. Mm -hmm. So let's get on with it. 
you know, let's just get on with it and keep going. So yeah. So anything else that comes to your mind that we need to like just put a little pin in and, and uh, you know, like they say, pin it on the computer. Is there anything else we need to think about in terms of anniversaries or celebrations? Uh, not specifically yet. We're still working on that. Our commission be aware that the uh, Route 66, the Mother Road, will have its centennial in 2026. So that's at the other end of our spectrum that we're planning for. So we've got a lot of work ahead of you us. you got a lot of work ahead, which is great, because that means mm -hmm. a lot of fun for the city. Yes. So, uh, Diane, I just want to say thank you again for this lovely uh, costume that you're wearing today. I know that was a labor of love. I, you know, I got props. Uh, you brought the <laughs> irises today, uh, and they're beautiful. The cookie cutter. Uh, it's just, it's great. So uh, it's good. We're going to be right back after this Mercy Minute uh, to wrap up, so don't go away. Blessings and greetings of mercy to you. My name is Anna Nichols. I am a Sister of Mercy and currently the leader of Heritage and Spirituality at Mercy International Association. I love the fact that sisters throughout time have gone where they have been called to go and they have often picked up ministries that they never intended to pick up. 25 years ago there were 22,000 Sisters of Mercy globally. Today we're down to about 6,200 with Sister Rock and some of the others. But despite the fact there are six and a half thousand or six thousand two hundred sisters left, there is an amazing number of women and men of Mercy who are, are working alongside us and that continues to expand and expand and for me that is incredibly exciting. So as far as National Catholic Sisters Week, I really look at the legacy that they have passed on and the fact that so many women, men, young people are living Mercy today, that, that really is for me what's significant. Well, again, uh, Joplin is such a wonderful place to live. Um, I, you know, uh, I came here kicking and screaming 15 years ago, and that's the way I'm going to be leaving here soon, too. Um, uh, but it is exciting to be part of a, a city that's got such a rich history uh, and such a varied history. Um, but we got so many things to celebrate here in the next few years, and, and our guest today, Diane Reed Adams, was talking about so many of those things. Uh, we've got uh, ice cream on August the 10th. We've got our state of bicentennial we've got our city sesquicentennial we've got our route 66 celebration coming up we got all these things happen to us in the next few years but the important thing is to realize we all stand on the shoulders of those who went before us whether that be in terms of faith whether that be in terms of our our, our forebears of our city I'm glad they were all here to do what they did because I'm glad to be standing on their shoulders still today uh, and giving a little bit of thanks on this Sunday uh, that we've got those history, that history. Come back and join us next week for Faith in Our Hometown. Thanks for watching. Faith in Our Hometown can be seen Sunday mornings at 6.30 and 9 a.m. on KSN. Brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin.